adding to the setting of the same. Your name is to be hallowed.
you can lift your hands and just open your spirit and just begin to speak to God. Can I hear prayer in this place? Ibada. Rala la ba de ve ke tele le ve vi anda kaya maya kata la ba vi a kata le le ve rala la ba da rama de ke ya ba ha raka ta la la ba ve 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 ila la ba sha te kaya mando ko ya maya kata la ba de vi kata la la ba raka ta la la ba sha te ke ya maya do ko ya mande ka la ba raka ta la la ba de ve ke tele le ve maya de ka ya ba ha vi a kata la la ba. Rala la ba da si kata la la ba de re le le be da kata kaya ba da kata can I hear prayer in this place ibada rala la ba da ri kata la la ba maya kate le be vi ande kaya maya kaya te la ba ri kata la la ba de le le be sha le ma te kaya ba maya kata ka li ma te kaya rala la ba de si kata kata rala la ba da ri ma te kaya ba rala la ba de we We bless you, O oh God. We bless you, King of Kings. We bless you, Alpha and Omega. We bless you, beginning and the end. We are here, O oh God. We are here just We are here just for you. 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 We bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. We bless the Lord this morning. Yamando Rebeda Ikatala Laba Riando Koya Riadaba Mando Koya Ria Katoko de Lima de Ma. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you. Abada Rimando Koya Rikata Kalabade. Imando Koya Ria Katala Labade. Rabada, ribada, 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 ribada. Raba so teke, lebe de kita, limando ko ya hafia koto. Ya mando, ribada, 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 ribada. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Lord, we love you. Wealth and divine. Greetings to everyone in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We put our hands together for Jesus this morning. We can do better than that. Let's celebrate God today. Is it you or is your neighbor who's letting us down? We said we are celebrating God. Lord, we love you. We love you. Lord, we love you today. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Spirit of the living God. We love you, Jesus. No other God but you. No other God but you. You are seated on the throne, high and lifted up. Oh, Lord, we love you. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. I understand the musician who wrote a song that says, Ngegen suge guwe. You know, if, if, if you really love God, if you really know God, you can say, Ngegen suge guwe. Doesn't matter what comes my way. Doesn't matter. My temperature for, for worshiping God does not change because of situations. Does not change because of where I am. But there's something that you are supposed to say in your heart. Tell God. Sometimes, you know, people go to God to complain. Sometimes you just go to tell God. It means I'll never leave. Doesn't listen, God doesn't matter what I go through. But Ngegen Suge Guwe. Loma kunjani, loma kwenza kaleni. You understand? Angu kons ngobi zinto zi right. But niya kons angoba ungunkulu ungkulu ngaloko angeke nsuge kuwe. Akumbi zinto kasi right kumbega akukinchi. How I relate to you? Ngeke nsuge kuwe noma kanchan. Noma inga chincha iliswe. Loma inga bala pe simpap. Loma inga nchi fisa yoku ya ngapi. Ngeke nsuge kuwe. 
Sometimes, I think sometimes God must trust us enough to know that regardless, despite what he might go through or what she might go through, this one is mine. Hallelujah. You know, there's, there's nothing as painful as being married to someone you're not sure whether they are yours or not. So you have to be bringing chocolates and sweets every day to, to try to... What, what will become of you if Jesus does not bring chocolates? What, what will become of you if not, no miracle? Okay, nothing is happening. God just... But as for me and my house, we will save the Lord. Whether in the desert, whether in Canaan, whether wherever, I will save. Ah, Shabada. in the realm of the natural and in the realm of the spirit that we are yours and yours forever we will bow to no other God we will worship no other God you are our God whatever comes our way you remain enthroned as the only God. We thank you this morning for the opportunity to stand before you and say our praises and sing our worship and say our worship to you. We thank you for that honor. As we are getting to the word, we pray in the name of Jesus. Speak to our lives. Your will be done. We were created for your glory. We are here just for you. May your will be done. 
we open our hearts we allow you to speak to us in the name of Jesus we thank you lord amen the good lord bless you let's put our hands together for Jesus allow me to welcome you second service in the wonderful name of our lord and savior Jesus Christ hallelujah give your neighbor a high five as pagera or a whatever in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah yes kick say to them welcome to our second service can i greet um, everyone and welcome you can i greet all the leaders of the second service in the wonderful name of our lord and savior jesus christ the pastors the elders the deacons we welcome you and those who come for second service we bless you in jesus name hallelujah uh, allow me to greet pastor tatenda and the church from Zishavani. They are in the house in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, God is good. Eh? It is second service that you have pastors that travel for second service. I'll tell morning service that second service yes, something. We greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In our midst we have also all the way from Assemblies of God, Kumalo Assembly, we have pastor uh, Nyati and his beautiful wife, they are in the house in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Uh, they are our brothers in the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God for you, sir. This is our second service, so you can choose whether the first service or the second service, which one you want to be in. You are allowed. There will be a third service coming soon. So, yeah, you can even come for the third service in the name of Jehovah. We thank God for you, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you for your prayers. Thank you for being with us, standing with us all of, from the beginning up to this very day. Hallelujah. Uh, all the way house to minister the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. I've heard you preach uh, many times, but there's one thing the message does not change. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we say we thank God for people. You know, the Bible says something. It says, after doing all, stand. You see, there are times when everything else seems not to be working. Prayer. You have done prayer. You have done. But stand. Sometimes people must stand on their message. Stand on what they believe. Stand on their confession. Stand until something happens. She's in the house today to minister the undiluted word of God because the Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God we are about to hear the word of the Lord I welcome all those who are joining us online wherever you are joining us from you type hallelujah the place you are joining us from say that when we pray we also pray for that nation the power of God is coming right into your house as you are listening to the word of the Lord be ready to hear God in Jesus name the good Lord richly bless you amen God bless you God bless you this afternoon hallelujah hallelujah oh let's just lift our voices to him thank you Jesus thank you Jesus He's the only true wise God. Beside him there is none other. Hallelujah. All other gods beside our God, they are useless. They are powerless. They've got eyes, but they cannot see. They've got ears, but they cannot hear. They've got hands, but they cannot move. But our God... Hallelujah. Solomon says, incline thine ear and hear my prayer. Because he knows that God is a God who hears and answers prayers. Thank God, no more sacrificing of the lambs and the bullocks. Jesus paid the price. And we give him thanks this afternoon. We give him thanks for who he is. We give him thanks for all that he has done. And we declare this afternoon, as we sit in his presence, we will worship. We will worship. Am I talking to us this afternoon? 
We will worship. No, I'm not hyping you up. We're just making a declaration. We will worship. Hallelujah. Because it is in our worship. He comes in and he inhabits and he makes his way known in our worship. So we bless God this afternoon. You may be seated in his presence. Before I begin to minister, let me testify to the goodness of God. Let me testify to the helping power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me testify that without him, I can do nothing. Amen. Hallelujah. I misunderstood at the text which I tried to read at 6 o'clock this morning. I misunderstood the text. I thought I was just preaching for one session. So I was relaxed after preaching until it was pointed out to me. You're preaching in the next session. I sent up an SOS. God, you got to help. I've been preaching from 1975. So you and I both know I could back up in the spirit and pull out a message and say, By faith. Amen. And we kicked Ichabod out. Amen. Oh, am I speaking to you? Amen. By faith together. Amen. We kicked Ichabod out our homes, our church, our family members, and our own lives. Amen. Now it's time for the glory, as he knows it, as he shows it, to return into our lives. Let's go to first, uh, Chronicles, the book of Chronicles, Second Chronicles. Hallelujah. Again, I've got to read quite a few verses to let the gist of the scriptures come forth. Reading from verse 7, Second Chronicles chapter 5, reading from verse 7. You would understand that by this time, King Solomon has built the temple which his father wanted to build for God. And God told his father, you've shed too much blood. Your son will do it. So as a result, Solomon built the temple of God. Everything is in place. Verse 7 says, And the priest brought in the ark of the covenant of the Lord unto his, its place, to the oracle of the house, into the most holy place, even under the wings of the cherubims. For the cherubims spread their wings over the place in the ark, and the cherubims covered and the other and the cherubims covered the ark and the, the staves thereof above. And they drew out the staves of the ark, that the end of the staves were seen from the ark before the oracle, but they were not seen without. And there, and there it is unto this day. There was nothing in the ark save the two tablets which Moses put therein at Herod. When the Lord made a covenant with the people, with the children of Israel, when they came out of Egypt. And it came to pass when the priests came out of the holy place. For all the priests that were present were sanctified and did not then wait by course. And the Levites, which were the singers, all of them, A, of Asaph, y'all excuse me, the light is playing with me here, which with their sons and their brethren, being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and psalteries and harps, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them were 120 priests, sounding with trumpets. It came to pass as the trumpeters and the singers were as one to make one song in, to be heard in the pra praises and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpeters and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, for he is good, 
for his mercy endureth forever. That then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord. So that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. What an experience. Hallelujah. I said to you earlier, the ark of the covenant had left the children of God. For seven months it tarried in the homes of the Philistine. God, Dagon, in the, God, uh, the house of God, Dagon. Dagon suffered at the hand of God being in the temple with him. First of all, when they came the next day, Dagon is on his face, lying down before the God Almighty. They put him to stand up again. The next day he's found, all his stumps are cut off. Now the Philistine says, the plagues and the lice and the mouths that has come upon us, we must get rid of this thing from the children of Israel. With this, the ark of God starts a journey. The children of the Philistines put the ark on a new cart. You and I know that the ark was always carried on the shoulders of the Levites. No one had the responsibility to touch the ark. But because the Philistines didn't know better, they put it on a new cart. The church of Jesus Christ, in seeking for the glory to return to the house of God, We've adopted the standards of the Philistines. And we've put the ark of God on a new cart. The ark of God traveled. And they went the way they were supposed to go. David heard that the ark of God settled in the house of Abinadab. He said, let's go get the ark of God back. The Bible says no one should touch the ark. No matter if the ark is leaning, no matter if the presence of God seems to be drifting, don't touch it. It is not your responsibility. It is God's responsibility always to steady his people. But Uzziah, he touched the ark because it stumbled out of the sincerity of his heart. Sometimes we do things out of sincerity, but the word of God always prevails above our feelings. The word of God must always prevail above our emotions, no matter how you feel. If God says, don't touch it, you stand afar off and you say, God, look. It's beginning to shake, but don't touch it. Don't make no plans to fix it. Some of you are looking into your church, and you're seeing things that you feel ought not to be, and you're trying to steady it. I'm saying take your hands off today and let God deal with the situation. Take your mouth off today and let God deal with the situation. Uzziah lost his life. As a result of trying to do God's business. If God said don't do it. Just don't do it. People might be pushing you. Don't do it. When he doesn't lead you. It is your emotions. So many times we hear. People say God told me. And God spoke to me. And God directed me. There is a close close call between our emotions and the voice of God. So many people have walked out of the will of God because they thought they heard God when it was actually your emotions. People are in marriages today because they thought they heard God when it was your emotions. People have uh, built churches because they thought they heard God. It is important that you know the, God, the voice of God from your emotions. It is important that you're able to differentiate, uh, separate uh, your emotion from God's voice. The poor man of God. He saw the ark of God stumble and out of the sincerity of his heart. But you know he was sincerely wrong. Out of the sincerity of his heart, uh, he put forth his hand to steady the ark. God is able to do that which you think cannot be done. He asked of all of us, is there anything too hard for me? He says, I am the God of all flesh. Have I not said I will do it? And will I not do it? He who delivered you before is more than able to deliver you again. Just trust him. 
When David heard that the ark of God was in a dip, a bin, a dinner babs house. He said, let's go fetch the ark. But he did it according to the way the other people did it. He followed the pattern of the Philistines. Oh God, when the church follows the world, we're in trouble. When our worship is according to the world's beat, the music, we're in trouble. When we cannot worship God without music, we're in trouble. When we can't have all the trappings of looking wealthy, we're in trouble. If we can't worship God, God, and there is no music. I say to you, we're in trouble. We've got to be able to worship God with and without, in spite of what we may feel. I will enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise because God has been so good to me. God snatched me as a branch from the burning. That's why I worship him. Music or no music. The music is beautiful. It ushers us. It helps us. But we ought to be able to worship without music. Back in the day when I grew up, we didn't have a praise and worship team. The poor pastor did everything. He moderated. He sang out of tune. He did everything. But you know what? We had to put more into our worship. Nobody carried us. We weren't sitting and rocking to somebody. We were listening to the songs, the songs of Zion that told us where we're coming from and where we're going to. Now some of the songs we're singing, we don't even understand them. One writer says, he was thinking of his girlfriend when he wrote a song and he was shocked to hear it being played in the Christian churches. Kirk Franklin, some of you who run after like a crazy person. Kirk Franklin is an addict, an addict to pornography. He curses us all Christians and he says God used Noah who was a drunkard. So God uses him because, even though he's into pornography. This is the state of the church that we are living in. But here I'm speaking to us here at Wealthy Word today. I'm speaking to you today. I'm not bothered about Kirk Franklin. I just dropped that in there for you. That was just a little side piece. But here at this church, by faith, we kicked him out this morning. But if we kick him out, we've got to replace him with something. And not any something. We want the Holy Spirit to come back into our individual lives. Let me make this clear again. I am not saying that the Spirit of God left the church. Some people have been without him for the longest while. And while you're without him, it affects the service. Amen. So can you say amen to that? Amen. Hallelujah. Now the stage is set. Solomon has built the temple. It is time for the ark to come back home. But before the ark gets back home, David goes back to collect the ark. But this time he does it the right time, the right way. When we invite the presence of God, we've got to do it the right way. It's got to be humility. It's got to follow the word. We cannot make plans for the spirit to come back and say we're going to invite one of the best singers in the land and we're going to make sure we hype it up. No, you inviting people you not inviting the Lord yeah. hallelujah yeah. ah big names carry big money and big money makes big contacts that's good but when we want the presence of the Lord we're gonna do it the way David did it he got the Levites and he said no you all know this ark supposed to be on your shoulder yeah. to get the ark back home it costs something when David saw the ark coming back and he began to dance out of his clothes, Michael, his wife, got angry because she thought he was disrespecting his office. When you understand I've been without his presence for so long, I couldn't feel him. I couldn't go anywhere near him, but he's coming back home now. You will excuse me if I do the Tennessee walls. You will excuse me if I body pop in church because the presence of God that was absent for so long, he's returning to his place. David said, cast me not away from thy presence, nor take your Holy Spirit from me. He said, God, renew in me a clean heart. When you know what it is to feel, to be without.
felt his presence. And his presence, you just feel a little, hallelujah. You just feel a little something. That's the only way I can put it. You feel a little something. It's a little stirring on the inside. Ha! Ah, you begin to say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In anticipation for what is going to follow. You glorify him. You don't care about who is looking at you. That's why I say to you ladies, some of you dress and you tell me, I ain't expecting nothing. You ain't looking for the Lord to touch you because your clothes too tight. It ain't long enough. It ain't loose enough. So when instead of us praising God, we got to watch your nakedness. And somebody got to run for a cloth and cover you. But when you're expecting God, you're coming loose. And you say, anyway, you bless me. Anyway, you bless me. Some of you use church like a fashion show. Trying to outdo the other. No, 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 no. I'm coming in here because I want him to touch me on the inside. Tomorrow, I don't know where I'll be shut up. Tomorrow, I don't know what an enemy planned for me. But today, while I have the opportunity to praise him, to worship him, to glorify him, I'm coming in with everything I've got. I don't care who don't like it. You don't know where I'm coming from. Ah, that's got to be your attitude. You don't know how long he hasn't touched me. You, know how, you don't know how long I've been crying for this. Now leave me. Let me praise my God. Michael says to David, shame on you. A man like you exposing yourself. Ah, oh, brethren. That's the plan of the enemy, to keep Ichabod in the house of God. But we will kick him out as we dance in the spirit. We will kick him out as we praise God with our whole hearts. We will kick him out as we lift our voices in praise to God. And say, you are welcome in this place. Holy God, you are welcome in this place. For all of my life, you've been so good to me. For all of my life, on the mountaintop, you've been good. Even when I had to walk through the valley and shed the tears, you've been good to me. When the hour comes back home, it's a praise God. It's a hallelujah. It's a thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's a bless you, God. Ah, then you go a little higher as he touches you a little more. You begin to feel something moving again. A feeling that you haven't felt in a long while. You say, yes, Lord. I'm ready for this, God. I want this, God. I need it. I'm tired pretending. You know what a preacher told me once? I said, my brother, how are you going? He said, well, sis, it's hard, but I'm faking it until I make it. I know that shocked you, but a lot of you faking it until you make it. Uh, that's not God's plan. Let's bring the ark back. Let's welcome him back uh, with everything we got. Uh, open your arms uh, and say, here am I to worship. Here am I to bow down. Here am I to say that you are my Lord. When you begin to worship like that, you will give birth to twins right inside of here. When you open your spirit up uh, and say, come Lord Jesus, uh, I long for your presence. Uh, God, he only has to look in your direction. And you're going to get pregnant in the spirit. <sighs> Solomon brings the ark in. And I'm fascinated when the Lord led me to this. Sitting in the office just now. The Bible says, and it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place. For all the priests that were present were sanctified. Are you all hearing me? The priest was sanctified. We got some slew for deacons in our churches. Amen. We got men serving the altars who chasing the sisters all over the church. Yes, yes. We got sisters who have to constantly fight off the brothers. Yes. Hey, we got priests in office who don't know how to keep themselves. Yes. They got a wife and a side chick and another side chick. Yes. All in the same church. Yes. But the Bible says... The priests sanctify themselves. Ah, this is something that you do, not your pastor. You don't come to church waiting to see if pastor is going to read you out. I say, the Lord showed me you in fornication. And if he didn't say it, you say, oops, I got away this time. When you understand you're in the presence of God. The church is a dangerous place. The church is a terrible place. Because you don't know who God is going to use to expand. 
expose you. You may have gotten by, but you wouldn't get away. Because in the presence of God, sin cannot stand. The Bible said all the priests sanctify themselves. When you sanctify yourself, you mean business for God. When you sanctify yourself, you say, God, I'm ready now. I'm ready now. I'm ready now. Just how you want me, I'm ready now. The Bible says when the priests sanctify themselves and the Levites, you know who the Levites? The Levites were the musicians. Hallelujah. Which were the singers and all of them of Asaph of Heman, of Judah, Judathan, sorry, with their, seed, with their seed and their brethren. They be, being arrayed in white linen, having symbols and sword, trees and half. They stood in the east gate at the end of the altar. And with them, 120 priests sounding with tr trumpet. Nobody was minding their own business. Everybody was creating an atmosphere for him to come in. Beloved, when you understand, this is his place. It ain't not about you. I don't care how cute you look. It's not about you. I don't care how much you could sing. It really is not about you. When I'm going through, you can't heal me. When I'm in trouble, you can't fix me. I, I need him to come in. I, I need him to take his rightful place because when he comes in, the sick is healed. You will not go back the same way if you get into his presence and allow him to deal with you. So they were in one accord. Nobody was trying to outdo each other. Let me talk to my brother musicians again. See, when you're playing, it's not to be heard above everybody else. When you're playing, you got to play on a level with the people singing so that we can hear the words. <laughs> Everybody is about their five minutes in the sun. Yeah. Everybody wants a little bit of fame. So we try to outdo each other. And then the singers have to sing louder to outdo the music. Ah. Come on, man. Let's get it together. We're in one accord. We're worshiping together. Take it down a bit so that the people can hear the words of the song. So the singers don't have to shout above the music. We're doing it in one accord. And we say, come. We appreciate him as he walks down the aisles and everybody is singing. The ministers were not waiting until the church service got going for them to come in. How many times the preacher doesn't come to the pulpit or the preacher doesn't come into the service until long after the service has started and they make a grand entrance <laughs> with their entourage and disturb the service. Because they have to get all their needs met. Let me tell you something. If you're invited anywhere to preach and you're a preacher, find you behind in the seat. Whatever seat is allocated to you, when pastor says it's time, find yourself in your seat. You should have done your reading at home. You should have done your praying at home. You should have bucked yourself up in the spirit. So when the service starts, you are not disturbing it with your appearance. Mm. Because, you know, we as humans, we are easily distracted. The, the person might be up here trying to get us to praise God and look at us. We take them to their seat. When they sit down, we go. And the service is disrupted. Come on. They invite you to preach. Get all your stuff together. Don't act as if you're a big somebody. Get all your stuff together. Me, I, I custom hold in my Bible. I, I just know my Bible. I, I don't let nobody carry my Bible. That's me. Protocol here says somebody carries it. But I feel when I have to preach, that's my crutch. I hold on to it. If people invite you to preach in their church, behave yourself. You're not bigger than anybody. You may have all the gifts going for you, but when you're invited into somebody's church, you behave yourself. You humble yourself. You do not demand the things from people. The Bible says they were singing together. They were working together with the choir. Listen to me, leaders. Listen to me, pastors, evangelists, whatever position you are in, church. You're not bigger than God. Humble yourself. 
So that when you get into the service, God could use you. But you're coming into the service with your chest all out here. Your head all out here. Making a new sense of yourself. Amen. Sit quietly. And let the Lord use you if he wants to. Hallelujah. And when you get the opportunity to preach, when you get the opportunity to preach, do not preach T.D. Jakes. Do not preach other preachers. Ask the Lord for your own message. Ah, you see, you forget that everything is on YouTube today. And we sit in our seats and we listen to preachers preaching T.D. Jakes. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. <laughs> Nothing new coming out of your mouth. But when we do it together, we understand that this is what ushers in the presence of God. We say, come Lord, come. And as you sit in your seat, you say, Lord, I really want you in this service. Lord, your, your presence in this service will make all the difference. Come. As you worship, he will come. As you call him, he will show up. He will show up to meet the needs of the people. He will show up to come and let people know, I am here. What do you want? As the, as the elders joined the people in worshiping, nobody was up trying to outdo each other. The Bible says, and it came to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one song to be heard in the praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the tr trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord saying, what were they saying? They wasn't speaking in tongues. They wasn't giving you revelation. They were declaring to everybody, for he is good and his mercies endure it forever. If you don't have anything else to say, when you step into the house of God and you look back where he brought you from, for he is good and his mercies endure it forever. If that is all you can say, for he is good and his mercies endure it forever. You see, we come to church and everybody has an agenda. Some want to speak in tongues. Some want to do something else. Some want to laugh in the spirit. We all over the place. We stand together as one. For he is good. And his mercy is endured forever. We look back in our lives and see where he's brought us from. We could easily say he's brought us from a mighty long way. But actually we want to say, for he is good. He is good. He's better than good. He's better than to us than we've been to ourselves. Some things that we've done, we should have been cut off. Some things that we've done, they should have been singing abide with me over our coffin. But God, when we look and see that we're still here in 2023, when COVID-19 was running through the churches, running through the homes, running all over the place, we could have been one of them in the coffin, but God kept us. So when you come to the house of the Lord, for he is God and his mercy is endured forever. Stand with me this evening. Stand with me this afternoon, sorry. Just stand with me. See? I want him to make his presence felt in your life and my life. I don't want you to go away saying, oh, you know, that was a good message. I'm beyond that stuff. I'm too old for that now. <laughs> People patting you on the back. That was a great, great, everybody preaches great messages. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have two, two bits of sense and you can put some words together, you can preach a message. <laughs> but you know what? We don't want it to be great. We want him to be great today. We want you to leave this place and say, didn't our hearts burn within us when he touched us? Are you ready? We're going up just a little higher. We're going up just a little higher. We're going up. Don't, don't wait for no fantastic words from me. I don't know them. But you know, you're going up a little higher as you worship. As you lift your hands to him, just make this about you and him. Just tell him, Lord, I want your glory back. I want your glory back. In order to get his glory back, you've got to be prepared to lay your glory down. So the question to you today is, where will you lay your glory down? 
What is it in, in your life that makes you feel that you're so big? You're so proud. You've got to lay it down. Whatever you think God has blessed you with and you've put it above him, lay it down that he can come in and fill this place with his glory. Are you ready to praise him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is God. And beside him there is none other. May the praises go up in this place. Come on, you all help me. Thank you, Jesus. Open your mouths and praise him. Tell him, God, you're awesome in this place. He wants to move. He wants to move in our midst. Only you, only you can allow him as you lift your voice to him. One more time, Lord. The Bible says, Peter, when he knew he had betrayed Jesus, he went out and wept bitterly. While he was weeping, I believe he was saying, one more time, God. Just, just one more time. You need him. You need his presence. It's a long time since he hasn't touched you. It's a long time since he hasn't moved on the inside. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you glory. We give you glory, Pastor. Thank you, Jesus. We give okay. you praise, God. We give you praise. It's okay. We bless the Lord. We want to just go into the presence of the Lord. The message is, how much of Him do you need? The secret with God is that how much of God carry depends on how much you have allowed, you have created capacity. That's why Jesus will rebuke them and say, you of little faith. In other words, you can have more of God and you can have less. But in this moment, we are all saying, Lord, I don't know how, when last were you touched, oh God? This is the question that has been when she was saying, this. when last, when last did you feel God? When last did you feel his touch? Because it's different. It's not, it's not like anything. You know it's God. Jesus. When last in your life, when Jesus. last did you have that encounter Jesus. and that touching and you know that this Hallelujah. is God? This is God. Jesus. It takes the hungry, Barcelona. It takes those who say, I'm test for you, oh God. Yeah. I, I just, if whatever of yeah. you, that's all that I want. Hallelujah. And we do away with all this Hallelujah. nonsense of religion. This nonsense of Jesus. I'm called the pastor, so and Jesus. so, or deacon, so and Jesus. so. I want more of you. Hallelujah. I want more of you. What? How many, how many are here saying that? Thank you, Jesus. You can join us here. Thank you, Jesus. No, I'm not, I'm, I'm not meaning the, to just come because others are coming. But you are saying in your life, I want you, more Jesus. of God. I want more of God. Can I give Thank you a secret? Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God is like money. Holy God. Sorry, let me Holy give you that example. God, God is like Holy money. Holy God. Holy God. If you Holy have little God. money, it doesn't Jesus. work. Jesus. I've heard people saying, ah, my money is not working. No, it's Jesus. because in Luchwani. Uncle Uncle Luchwani is not good enough for you. Yes, you need yes, God. Yes, Lord. You, are, you need more of Him. Hallelujah. It is God who Thank makes the Jesus. difference. Thank it is Jesus. not people. It's not the church. You can go to wealthy weight. That's Jesus. not good enough. Thank you, Jesus. I want more of God. Thank you, Jesus. I want more of God. Hallelujah. As we are, the Bible says the end of a thing is greater than its beginning. Hallelujah. We are about to end 2023. What will be a testimony? Hallelujah. I want my testimony to say, I have more Thank of you, God. Jesus. I have more of God. Ayamaya. Oh, Shalade. Oh, Shabada. The Bible says, as the heart panteth after the water brook. So panted my soul after thee, O God. I'm thirsty for the living waters. I want more than this. There must be more to Christianity than this. He is here. He is here. Even if you can't get to the altar, right where you are, lift your hands. Right where you are, lift your hands. Hallelujah. Hey. He is Lord. Shall I never Ah. Ah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Listen, some of you are standing here, but you're not thinking about what you really want. You're thinking about the problem that you're going through. I understand this. If we seek him first and his righteousness, everything will be added unto you. If you get him back in your life the way he's supposed to be, you will be able to handle anything that life throws at you. Oh God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Please, brethren, just lift your spirits to the Lord. Just lift your spirits unto the Lord. This is, between, <laughs> this is between you and him. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, better.